Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Network Monitoring Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about the why of monitoring, and then we're going to talk about tools to monitor the network. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. I'm going to begin with the why of network monitoring. How do you know what is going on in your network? Is it healthy or is it about to crash? Network administrators really hate to be surprised by failures in their networks, especially ones that could have been foreseen and therefore kept from happening. How do they keep from being surprised? Well, they enact a plethora of procedures and tools to monitor their networks and to keep track of how those networks are behaving. They do this to reduce the surprise element. Now that we've covered the why of network monitoring, let's talk about tools that you can use to monitor the network. One of the main tools that network administrators use to monitor their networks are log files. All operating systems offer a means of viewing events that occur to that specific machine. That also includes networking equipment. There have been some applications that have been developed to monitor systems and networks that also generate log files, among other actions that they can take. Log files can be used to help pinpoint when a problem occurred and to help narrow down the possible causes of that problem. Log files can also be used to help create a baseline of network behavior so that you know what to expect from your network. Log files can usually be classified as being systems logs, general logs, or history logs. As a general rule, log files are an after-the-fact means of monitoring the network, and they're not very good at real-time analysis. That's partially due to the sheer amount of information that log files can generate. It's just too difficult to keep track of that in real time. Now let's talk about some specific logging tools that you can use. The first one that I'm going to talk about is Event Viewer. It's not really a log file in itself. It comes with Windows Server and most other Windows operating systems, and this tool can be used to review Windows log files. The most important log files that you can view from Event Viewer are application, security, and systems logs. Application logs contain events that are triggered by the actions of an application. For example, if you have Live Update enabled, it will create log entries based on actions taken by Live Update. Then there are security logs. These contain events that are triggered by security events. For example, some logs are created for successful and unsuccessful logon attempts. Then there are systems logs. These contain events triggered by Windows systems components. For example, it will create an entry for when a driver starts or fails to start. In either situation, a log entry will be created. Now let's talk about a non-Microsoft log, and that would be syslog. Syslog was developed in the 1980s and it provides devices that normally would not be able to communicate with a means of delivering performance and problem information to systems administrators. This permits there to be separation between the software that generates the message, the storage of that message, and the software that analyzes the generated message. This separation of function allows syslog to be highly configurable and has allowed it to continue to be a vital tool for monitoring networks even today. As a matter of fact, the Internet Engineering Task Force, the IETF, liked syslog so much that they standardized it in 2009. Syslog can generate log messages based on the types of services that are running, and it includes a severity level that ranges from zero, the most severe, up through seven, the least severe. Syslog can generate a lot of log messages, 
most network administrators configure it so that they only get alerted when a minimum severity level has been reached. As a matter of fact, you almost never want to capture debug log events unless you are actively debugging an application or a service, just because it generates so much information. Syslog can be configured so that network administrators receive their alerts via text message or SMS message or by email, or they may even receive a voicemail message. While Syslog is a cool tool, it's not the only one that's out there. There's also Simple Network Management Protocol, SNMP. SNMP is an application layer protocol used to monitor and manage a network's health. Network or systems administrators configure monitors, these are often called traps, on devices that view the operation of a specific item. As in, is that router's interface up or is that router's interface down? The monitors periodically communicate with a network management station, or NMS, through GET messages, that's G-E-T messages, that the NMS sends out. The response from the monitors is stored in a management information base, or MIB, which is a type of log file. The administrator can custom configure the monitors with set messages sent from the network management station. When an event occurs, as in the interface goes down, the trap is tripped and the event is logged. SNMP, just like syslog, can be configured to just log the event or it can be configured to contact the network administrator. SNMP gives network and systems administrators the ability to provide more real-time monitoring of a network's performance and health. Then there's Security Information and Event Management, CM. It's a term for software products and services that combine security information management, or SIM, and security event management, SEM. SIEM may be provided by a software package, a network appliance, or as a third-party cloud service. It is used as a means of monitoring and providing real-time analysis of security alerts. That is an example of the security event management function, the SIM function. It can also be used as a tool to analyze long-term data and log files. That's an example of the SIM function, or the security information management function. SIEM can be highly configured to the needs of the individual network. Now that concludes this session on Network Monitoring Part 1. I talked about the why of network monitoring, and then I briefly touched on some tools for monitoring the network. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.